That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I'm the director of R&D for Intelligent Concrete, where we specialize in bringing new and emerging technologies to the industry. What we're doing this week is getting into Shark Week. We're not getting into Shark Week. Sorry. Colloidal Silica Week. We've got a lot of information. A lot of folks are asking us some questions. Today's video is going to focus on the how-to with colloidal silica. There are certain axioms, certain rules. Some can be bended, some can be broken, some have to be stuck to uh, when using colloidal silica in the back of a ready mix truck. And when I say a ready mix truck, I'm talking about any type of very big vessel that's going to take out concrete and mix it somewhere between 3 and 12 or 3 and 15 RPMs uh, for the purpose of putting it into a formwork for construction in the construction industry. So, the um, impetus of this is to give you those rules. So the first rule is colloidal silica, colloidal silica admixtures, when you're mixing them as an integral component of concrete, they are absolutely awesome. You get the most efficiency out of them when you mix them at the tail end of mixing. And it's similar to a polycarboxylate style high range water reducer where you want all the cement particles wetted before the colloidal silica goes into the back of the concrete trucks. You know, um, we did this uh, dispersion study or the, the impact of colloidal silica or the colloidal silica impacts on dispersion. I can't remember the title. What we found is, is that the sequencing is very important to include other things, but getting it onto fluid concrete is the first rule and the most important rule when using colloidal silica based admixtures or technologies in the back of a ready mix truck. The second one is you want to make sure that you have a water cementitious ratio uh, of above a 0.35. And again, it goes back to the fluidity, but it also goes back into uh, the type of concrete that we're creating. We're going to get into that deeper here in a second. But normally when we use water cementitious ratios of a 0.35 or lower, or lower than a 0.35, it's those higher early strength mixes, or more often than not, and normally there are other chemicals that go along with it. So, uh, you know, yes, that's a rule that you can bend, you can break, but definitely have to baby the concrete a little bit more than mixes that have a higher water cementitious ratio and a lot more changes that you might have to make like reduce your accelerators, increase your hydration stabilizers, or maybe increase your high range water reducer to ensure dispersion. Um, the next thing is dilution before mixing is needed. And this is one of them that I've seen broken many, many, many times. And oh, it makes me wince, so I know it has been broken successfully. I would not recommend it, but if, if you've seen success, how am I to argue with you? I've learned that there are a lot of things that happen in the field that we cannot yet explain that prove the efficacy of a certain procedure, practice, and technology. Um, so I say that when you're diluting it into the ready mix truck, if it is already plumped into your admixture sequence, uh, sequence it at the same time uh, as the, ad, as the uh, tail water or just after or just before the tail water. I'd rather it just after or with. And if you're putting it with a five gallon bucket, um, you know, make sure you're throwing some water in there and you can always trim that water out on your computer or your batching system. The next one is use a polycarboxylate uh, polymer, a polycarboxylate ether style high range water reducer to ensure um, dispersion. There are a bunch of patents that talk about this from a whole slew of providers out there, whether they want to use colloidal silica as just a, a densification agent or an accelerating agent. They're using, usually using some type of a, a, uh, a dispersion, dispersion agent to ensure that there's going to be somewhere close to a universal dispersion of the colloidal silica once it goes into the concrete. Because when it comes down to it, it's all about chemistry. And the colloidal silica has a very specific, and I would even say sometimes very sensitive chemistry, that it, it's not very uh, friendly. Um, it doesn't give you the performance features and benefits if that chemistry is not conducive to that dispersion and then the efficacy of the product. So everything that I'm talking about with the 0.35 water cementitious ratio, the sequencing of it, the use of a polycarboxylate, 
is based on ensuring dispersion. When it comes to the high range water reducers, those polycarboxylate styles normally work off of hysteric repulsion, that they're not really changing up the, the chemistry of the pore solution. They're really using this you know, mechanical advantage from adjacent particles that have these polycarboxylates on them that separate the particles or cause deflocculation for that water reducing effect as opposed to the older school methods, the mid-range or the, the normal water reducers that are made with naphthalenes or lignans, they work off of an electronegative potential. So that's why we want to stay off of those because that, that change in pH or electronegative potential is going to have a negative impact on the um, electrical double layer that in the colloidal dispersion that is required to keep those particles bouncing off of each other in any universal dispersion so that they can be efficiently used. Once we combine that with uh, a pore solution that is designed to have a change in electronegative potential, it's going to have a negative impact or could have a negative impact on the electrical double layer, that force field around the colloidal silica, causing those things to bounce into each other's stick. And what happens is that gel, that liquid, kind of turns into a cottage cheese on a really, really small scale and on a really big scale in, in the worst situation. So yeah, I, I, I've seen this rule bent normally with a colloidal silica that has a modified surface to it. Uh, it's not a bare-based colloidal silica. And that change in chemistry also goes into our last bullet where you know, there are colloidal silicas that are really, really small that have to have a lot of surface, I wouldn't call them modifications, but, you know, sodium oxide at the surface to create that electrical double layer to ensure the dispersion. And because of that, like the uh, water reducer concept, if you have a, a binary, tertiary, quartary mix, a mix that has not just Portland cement, but a whole bunch of supplementary cementitious materials, that chemistry that's created, that alkalinity, uh, it might force the requirement of a, either a larger colloidal silica particle that is a little bit more, um, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for, a little bit tougher to that um, agglomeration effect because uh, electrical double layer change, uh, or something that is treated in a different way that doesn't rely on that sodium oxide or whatever type of salt that they're using to keep that suspension again. It's all about the chemistry. So that's some of the how-tos on using colloidal silica for concrete. I, I really thought it was important to share these things. This is, we found this out in two to three years worth of research. A lot of money went into understanding or in, into the uh, science behind things were working in the lab, but they weren't working in the field. Or they were working in the field and they weren't working in the labs. And, and people didn't understand the discrepancies and what we found is, is a, a lot of folks were just taking data meant for one specific type of cementitious composite and using it for concrete all over the world. Uh, but what was great about that is it gave us these lessons that I, I'm, I'm sharing with you today that we've shared over the industry and a lot of people have taken advantage of to bring colloidal silica to the concrete industry to save the world with all the concrete in it. So I hope you got something out of this. Like and subscribe! Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, throw them in the comment section below. Go concrete, beat asphalt. You're riding high in April.